people of Reddit who survive on less than 8 hours of sleep, how? I remember one time in my life, where I woke up feeling fully refreshed, and I've never forgot that moment ever since. Naps make me feel even more tired than I was before sleeping, but there was this one nap one time, that I woke up feeling the most refreshed I've ever been after sleeping in my whole life. Never been able to replicate it. Interestingly enough, that happened to me once, when I had surgery and got anesthetized. Turns out I have sleep apnea, and the tube they put down my throat was holding my windpipe open, so I stopped having apnea temporarily, so me being asleep was actually useful. A few years ago, it was midnight, and my wife and I were randomly super hungry. We debated doing a 1am Denny's run like we did when we were teenagers. After a bit, we decided to cook up a full breakfast. While cooking, I nibbled on some baby carrots, and had a small cup of coffee, it was a weird night. After eating, it was around 2am. I had been planning to pull a new all nighter to digest, since we had no plans the next day and I could sleep in, but I was suddenly exhausted and went to sleep. I woke up 4 hours later, awake. Like, when I think of the definition of awake, I think of that morning. I could practically see time, I was using 100% of my brain, I was just, fully, completely, pleasantly aware of all of my senses. I have never felt that good before after that day. I did try to replicate it once, and just felt like crap instead. June 17, 2007. Summer had just kicked off. I had just gotten my nasal packing out from a nose surgery I got to fix my deviated septum. I didn't sleep for two weeks more than 30 minutes at a time, and that day I slept 14 hours. I had a dream I was on a giant floating raft in the Bahamas, water was crystal clear and only 4 feet deep for miles. I could smell the salt water. Woke up and my family was gone for the day already, and it was just quiet, and bright. I thought to myself, that I will probably never feel this rested again, and that was the peak of my life. I think some studies have found that you can habituate to sleep deprivation. Basically, you get used to feeling tired and don't recognize that you are that fatigued anymore. Unfortunately, your performance on activities, like driving, continues to worsen as you get more sleep deprived. That's a bad combo. Slowly worsening performance, but remaining pretty confident in your abilities. I'm whatever the opposite of this is. I require like 9 to 10 hours of sleep, just to not be a zombie. I got 6 hours of sleep the other day, and I was very literally nodding off at work while standing up. I hate it, I'm tired constantly, because 10 hours of sleep is so unreasonable. Hey, I think I might have sleep apnea, guys lol but for real I really appreciate everyone's tips, advice, and personal stories, there's a lot here, that I never thought to look into before. As soon as it's financially viable for me to do so, I will see a doctor, and get a sleep study done. Thank you for showing, so much concern and care for an internet stranger. Yeah, there's a very small minority of people, that don't need as much sleep, but for the vast majority it's the cognitive dissonance of convincing yourself you're not as sleep deprived as you are. They've done studies where people rate their own performance on a series of activities after several days of sleep deprivation. After the first night they accurately gauged their performance has been impacted, but funnily enough, after days of sleep deprivation they lose the cell followings. Believe they're operating normally, and vastly underestimate the severity of how cognitively impaired they are. I think I may have heard all this on a radio lab or something, but they used example from wartime, from doctors, and from Spanish work performance, where the siesta has been removed, Spanish sleep late due to cultural aspects like late dinner time, late prime time TV, as well as a time zone that's poorly adjusted for their sunrise. Apparently a relatively late rising sun has an impact on the economy. I used to work with a guy who had three jobs. Worked all of them five days a week. He wasn't a very energetic guy. Always looked tired. Nice guy though. No idea how he did it. Like 10 years ago there was a span of like 6 months, where I had two jobs. 12pm 5pm, and 9pm 5am. I basically just ran on naps. There were some days, where I felt really fucked just driving to work. Nodding off. Was dumb as hell. I consistently sleep between 8 to 10 hours a night. 7 hours minimum, 12 hours max. I just, love to sleep. It's a really pleasurable activity for me. 
I love being in bed with my partner and my cats. Dreaming is fun. I am a recovering insomniac. From about 7 years old to 22 years old, I was going on about 5 hours of sleep on a regular basis with these 12 hour comas sprinkled here and there. It took therapy and lifestyle changes and getting older to get me to start taking bedtime routines seriously. I use a lot of cognitive behavioral techniques to help myself settle down and have a solid bedtime routine. Researchers found that during deep sleep, the slow wave activity of nerve cells appears to make room for cerebral spinal fluid to rhythmically move in and out of the brain, a process believed to rinse out metabolic waste products you need REM sleep. Lack of REM sleep prevents this spinal fluid process probably leading to early stage dementia. You will look back on this time and realize some things you said or did were 100% because of sleep deprivation. My wife and I had twins that did not sleep well. We were lucky to get 3 hours in uninterrupted sleep, and 6 hours of total sleep was the absolute most we would ever get. We were probably averaging closer to getting 4.5 hours total, and that was 3 1.5 hour naps. There was one point where I spilled a small amount of jelly on the floor, looked at it audibly said I can't, and cried while cleaning it up. Looking back, it's funny, but in the moment cleaning that jelly almost mentally broke my sleep deprived brain. I just wanted a pp and j sandwich, and to sit down and the extra effort of bending over to wipe up jelly was enough to make me cry. Hello other short sleeping people, question. Do you experience, that you notice, that you are falling asleep, and have started dreaming, but you are in the dream world, and still half conscious of this? I will be in a conversation with my gf in bed, start talking nonsense, realize this and say we have to stop talking, because I'm falling asleep. Is there anyone who can relate, or am I alone? Friendly neighborhood sleep scientists stopping in. Most adults need 8 to 9 hours to function optimally. This is supported by a pretty robust body of research. Shorter sleep duration than this is associated with performance decrements across a variety of domains, and there is evidence for negative impacts on physiological health in the short and long term as well. Sleep is key to processes like restoration in various physical systems. There is also growing evidence that short sleep interferes with consolidation of memory from short to long-term storage. Sleep and relationships also appear to affect each other reciprocally. Good relationships promote good sleep, and bad sleep can hurt relationship functioning. Tell her, it's bad for your bro, for the vast majority of people, anyway, even if it feels like it isn't. Sleeping too much is also associated with negative outcomes. For example, sleeping more than 9 hours is predictive of elevated cardiovascular risk. There is limited, but growing evidence, that some people are true short sleepers who may experience fewer or no apparent negative cognitive or physiologist effects of short sleep. This phenomenon is poorly understood, but is being investigated increasingly. Research is slowed in part by the difficulty of finding participants who are true short sleepers, but it is clear that most of us are not in this category, even if we think we are. The truth, according to the best available evidence, is that the vast majority of adults need 8 hours for best results. You can improve the quality of your sleep by prioritizing sleep hygiene. This includes having a regular bed wake time each day, even on the weekends. There's no such thing as catching up on lost sleep, not in a true sense. You can't undo the damage completely. Further, some evidence is beginning to indicate that the tempting practice of sleeping in on weekends to try to repay sleep debt has negative effects beyond the sleep that has already been lost. A consistent bed-wake schedule is one of the best gifts you can give yourself. Other tips you may have heard include minimizing light exposure, especially to blue light, for a few hours before bed. There is limited evidence about the effectiveness of things like phones' native settings for blue light reduction, so consider getting some filter glasses to put on when you are approaching bedtime and avoid screens. Other good resources are available via you googling it, you may think you are getting more sleep than you are. Smartphones and wearables can help track your sleep to try to assess how much you're getting. Alexa can alert you if you snore at night, which can indicate sleep problems. This tech isn't as good as research-grade sleep ectigraphy or polysomnography, but it's getting better. If you go this route, be sure you don't get obsessive about the data and quantifying or gamifying it. Good sleep is the goal, not making your phone happy at all costs. If you struggle with falling or staying asleep, the Veterans Administration has good, evidence-based smartphone apps you can download to help coach you and build good habits. Sweet dreams. 
follow up edits below here. Caffeine is definitely worth thinking about when thinking about your sleep hygiene as well. For example, my sleep is fairly delicate, but getting better, thanks to science. So I won't start a new serving of coffee after noon or finish one after 2 p.m. Caffeine can compound sleep problems, because although it can help you get through the day, it is very easy to then have it interfere with nighttime sleep latency. How long it takes you to fall asleep, quality, or quantity. If you are using caffeine to get through the day, because you're tired and dragging, it may well feel useful within days, but be detrimental to your sleep and performance across days. It's like putting a band-aid over a fresh wound to cover it immediately, but then ripping it off that night before the underlying problem has healed. If caffeine is interfering with your sleep quality, consider switching to something caffeine-free to fill that space as an afternoon ritual. You may find that the break in your routine still helps refresh you without interfering with a good night's rest. You can use your phone or other smart devices to remind you to start winding down and getting ready for bed in advance of your bedtime. Sure, you might be tempted to turn the TV on to finish an episode or to turn the lights back on and finish the chapter you're reading, but anything you can do to decrease friction in the direction of your target bedtime and good sleep hygiene will help. A parting thought. I once heard a very eminent colleague speak on this subject, and he said, if you were a sleep scientist, if you understood sleep and its importance the way I do, you would never shortchange yourself on another night of it. I found that quite sobering, because I am a sleep scientist, I do understand the importance, and I was still shortchanging myself. Many cultures today have succumbed to the glorification of business, in which it is seen as some kind of badge of honor, to not need much sleep. For almost all of us, however, 8 to 9, is the magic number, and we can't shortchange that fact, just ourselves. I get around 8, sometime 9. I'm very strict during my work week, 4 days out of the week, and have my phone set up to go into sleep mode, so apps are restricted, blue light is off, and I'm on do not disturb for everyone except immediate family. I take a sleep tincture to help me get drowsy, and that seems to work. A lot of it is habit, and making myself lay down on time, because I've learned that me on less than 7 8 hours for a work day is not productive, and I don't feel good about my work on those days. I survived on around 3 to 4 a night sometimes I skip a night or two of sleep, and I'm awake for 36 to 50 hours last night for example I got 2 hours, and 11 minutes dot I didn't realize this was a problem until I met my husband who needs like 11 hours of sleep, he encouraged me to go to the doctor I later found out that I have short sleeper syndrome, so I literally don't need more sleep I rarely ever feel tired. Sleep 4 to 5 hours a day, have a 4 month old baby and work from home. Since my girl works on site, I'm the only one who can watch the baby. So, I'm usually awake 18 to 19 hours a day. I try to work out 3 to 4 days a week to keep my health up. While I'm asleep she's watching the baby. Over the first few weeks of this routine your body gets used to it. Some days we can get 6 hours but that's rare. Babies eat every 30 minutes to every 3 to 4 hours depending on feeding method. We chose this life and it's worth the struggles. Kids aren't for everyone. I get between 4.5 to 7 hours a night, usually less than 6. I don't go to bed before 10.30 to 12 most nights, and my cats start crying for food between 4 to 5 am. Once I am awake, I struggle to fall back asleep, and usually just lie there and rest, get up, work out go for a walk, or do other stuff that I can't do, or focus on when the family is awake. I don't consume caffeine, I don't smoke, no drugs. It's just how I have been most of my life. The only time it changed was at the start of the pandemic. I had sciatica and my doctor prescribed Neurontin, Johnny's as I later learned they are called. I was taking 300 milligrams a day, and it helped my pain a bit, but also let me fall back asleep so, so easily. Coming off of those was a rough week. I tapered down over 6 to 7 days, and then slept like 2 to 3 hours for 2 days in a row before my body got back to a normal amount of sleep for me. It's been interesting keeping track of it, since I got a Fitbit in the spring. I set a goal of 8 hours and occasionally will get it, but here are my last 2 weeks. After a certain age I think almost nobody sleeps a full 8 hour a night. Most people after the age of 30 sleep 7 hours, which is sufficient. So, if we rephrase the question to, how can you survive on less than 7 hours a night, the answer would be that people will be tired and less energetic, have less focus, worse health, higher body fat etc etc. People simply cope less well with life with insufficient sleep. 
I used to need 8 hours of sleep a day, but after I started taking better care of myself, I feel the same after 6 to 7 hours of sleep now. The main thing. I drink a lot more water now. I didn't realize how dehydrated I was all the time before. I was drinking plus 8 cups of water a day, but that wasn't enough, apparently taking a dump 3 times a day really dehydrates the hell out of you. Better hydration equals less sleep needed I also eventually realized it was fish oil pills I was taking making me need to go to the bathroom so much. I stopped taking it, and don't need to go to the bathroom much which means I need less water. The less I am abnormally exhausted after a very strenuous day, I simply cannot sleep for longer than 7 hours. No tiredness or fatigue, no need for caffeine, just somewhere in the 6.30 to 7 hour range my brain shoots wide awake and fully rested, to the extent that no further sleep is even possible if I try. Most days I am awake before my alarm goes off. When I was young it used to drive my mother crazy. She requires a minimum 9 hours of sleep to function, and still cannot wrap her head around the fact that my body simply will not allow me to sleep a full 8. I used to work in a coffee shop. At 6 am I was, by a substantial margin, the most awake and aware person in the cafe despite the fact I didn't take my coffee until my first break around 8 to 9 am. Groggy customers and co-workers would always ask how many cups I already had to be so energetic so early in the morning, and accuse me of lying or bragging when I told them zero. Hey, you asked me buddy, I didn't offer up the information without prompting. Don't ask if you don't want to know. I have bouts of insomnia, that lasts from a week to a couple of months. During this time, I average about 3 to 5 hours a night, not counting nights, that I lay there until 4 am, give up, and decide it's time to get ready for work, it's about once a week without fail. I know eventually my body will shut itself down, and when it does it's a 12-14 hour coma for a couple days. Rinse and repeat. How do I do it? No earthly idea. Just used to it by now. But there are days, that I question how I haven't dropped dead yet. 